Now, our forebears in all these different tribes understood that there was another element in spiritual transformation. Uh, and I say our forebears because uh, modern folk have gone real sort of brain dead on this one and uh, begun to act this out unconsciously. <clears throat> and that is sacrifice. Sacrifice is always a part of authentic spiritual transformation. <clears throat> now, what was it that our ancestors knew? And I don't mean just the Degara, although they knew it. Uh, if you've studied with Martin, you know that the Mayans knew it. Well, the Jews knew it, and the Zoroastrians knew it, and so on. What is it that they knew? Well, <clears throat> there is something great. It wants something from me. If I want the resources I need for life, I'm going to have to offer it what it wants. And if I offer it something worthy, maybe it will return something back to me that will enable me to live. Me and my family, me and my community, me and my village, me and my world. Do you follow that? Now, so that, that is, the, I just recently uh, did a seminar on the archetype of sacrifice. And, uh, and in the course of studying this, doing cross-cultural studies of sacrifice, uh, those, those are the elements. This sacrifice element, we've now learned, you know, it can be either conscious or unconscious. So, in other words, here's the situation. You will sacrifice, period. I may know, I may feel deeply in my bones that, that, uh, that there needs to be a sacrifice. And uh, I may well decide it's you that needs to be sacrificed. Human beings have had a long history of that. But we're going to sacrifice you in order that the world continue to work. There's always sacrifice. It's whether you know you're sacrificing or not. You're going to sacrifice. Okay, so that's number six. Now, <clears throat> if sacrifice is done consciously, it is possible to enter into an ongoing communion with the great primal other uh, in which the flow between you and it gets to be a sort of beneficent flow. When that flow is established, if you can get into this communion consciously, then a lot of things are possible. That is to say, you will not have an energy shortage. And your courage will be better, and your susceptibility to despair will go way down. And that is when you, you, you actually can, it is actually possible for you to experience radiance. This is when what has been called indwelling occurs. This is when what has been called illumination occurs. Some of you have told me that you're very serious about your own uh, realization of the God within you. you know? Our ancestors witnessed that it's usually accompanied by, by a kind of uh, a, new kind, a new level of love, uh, a, a new level of peace. Uh, you and I could say that uh, then you can have passion and you can have the kind of passion that you would need it to really care about justice in the world. 
So <clears throat> those seven elements, I think, um, are the last two, conscious sacrifice, conscious offering, the power of conscious offering, uh, and entering into communion with the primal other, the great other, however your tribe conceives it. Um, those take you to sort of the farther reaches of uh, spiritual realization. And, uh, but there, all of these elements are present. If you, you study any, any uh, tradition of spirituality and you look closely, uh, th there, these elements are present. <clears throat> well, there's this story in the New Testament, and uh, it's about the feeding of the 5,000. And, uh, and all these folks, these hungry, tired folks that have been following Jesus, uh, it's getting toward nightfall, and they're, they're really tired, and they're hungry, and there's not anything for them. You all know this story, most, most of you do. And when they kind of ask, well, what do we got? Well, we got five loaves and two fishes. And so <clears throat> um, Jesus asked that they be brought to him, and he took them. And he blessed them, these very imperfect resources. And lo and behold, uh, suddenly there was enough to feed all of these people. And after everyone dined, um, they picked up all these baskets of things left over. Sorry. And <clears throat> that's about offering. That's about what happens when you bring an imperfect, fragmentary offering authentically to the Great One? That is, you know, I'm not Roman Catholic, but that's acted out every time the Mass is celebrated. That's why Jung was so fascinated by the transformation symbolism in the Mass. And that's why Jung believed that if you look deeply into the heart of alchemy, you will see a inner sacrifice that is modeled on the mass uh, in the heart of alchemy. <clears throat> so in any case, offering. And it's not. That, that's true in Christianity. But it's not just true in Christianity. It is that bringing... See, some traditions thought you had to bring the perfect offering. But, you know, that's a little grandiose. You have to bring authentically your fragmented offering. But if you bring it authentically, uh, uh, the great one can multiply it and give it back to you in a form you can receive and use to fuel your life. <clears throat>